Josh just joined. Welcome. Welcome, Josh. We'll get started in just a couple of minutes. Thanks for being here. Hello, Thomas, good to see you. Well, falls finally hit here. We're now in just the mid 70s instead of 80s and 90s. So nice uh, fall weather coming in. It's like 40, mid 40s at night. So it goes quite a big range. It's really cold. How's colder. your weather like, Justin? A <laughs> little, little colder here, buddy. A uh, little colder. Today, actually, today's not bad. I think it's going to be 60 as a high, and it's raining out there. It's raining. Yeah, I got oh, blue skies. No, we don't see that. I think that's over until, like, April. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. All the leaves basically fell off my tree yesterday. All at once. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. There is a bit. There's a lot of work to do in that backyard over the weekend. Let's see what you get to do. Yeah, well, I'm going to have a five-year-old and a three-year-old try and rake leaves. We'll see how it goes. I see Carlos has joined. I see my uh, my friend Joe has also joined. Hey, Joe. Morgan, thank you for joining. Steve. All right, we'll just give it one more minute, and then we'll, we'll get started. We're going to have a fun discussion um, today. As long as we're not talking about weather, try, because I don't want to hear about how nice yours is. Yeah, hold on. Let me open my shade so I can get some window view. <laughs> so your heater is not on in your house yet. That's what you're telling oh, me. Oh, no. no. Uh, the heater only comes on when it might get to like 50. Oh. At yeah, night. Our, to give you an idea, flannel sheets went on to the bed. That's, that's, that's where we're at. It's winter time. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's well. Let's get let's get started. We see quite a few people here now. Um, welcome everybody. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon from wherever you may be. Welcome to Zysol's Tech Talk. Um, my name is Tri Win, and uh, we'd like to have this you know great discussion here. We had an, a great response last time when we did this. So I we wanted to bring Justin back for kind of a round two encore here. Um, I have with me Justin Bush, the Vice President of Sales at Zultis, and he's had over 20 years of telecommunication experience serving the SMB to enterprise space, which is a perfect fit for what Zysel does too. And I'm, my name is Tri Nguyen. I'm the Channel Sales and Product Manager for Zysel Networks North America, with over 23 years of networking and telecom experience as well, focused on the SMB and small enterprise. Um, just a reminder, uh, I did send a message within the chat group there. Uh, that we're giving away a $100 Amazon gift card to a random participant who stays for the, the entire presentation. So just make sure you're, you're there and, and you can uh, you know, get be on that list. So when we review all the, the records of people joining, um, that you can qualify for that for the random drawing there. Um, I'd also want to, uh, I also want this kind of be interactive as well. So we've, uh, the last webinar I just did a, a week or so ago, that was really fun because we did have a lot of questions and really back and forth kind of um, uh, you know, interaction between people. So feel free to ask questions using that Q&A box. We'll try to answer them as we go along or what we don't get to, we'll, we'll talk to uh, talk on them up, uh, at the end of the discussion if we, if we can't get to them right away. So um, by maybe a show of hands, I just want to see what our audience is like here. By show of hands, how many of you are already doing some sort of unified communication? So network, voice, video, data, all combined there. So Carlos, Brian, Andy, all right, Joe, Steve, I mean, pretty much everybody. It's I think it's kind of a necessity to branch out, make sure you're covering your bases there. So I guess you're in a, a good boat. Um, there's a lot of people who are out there, a lot of partners who may have only dived into maybe one or the other, or maybe just a couple of those pieces. Um, but we definitely want to talk about, you know, unified communication and how that can be you know, profitable 
how it can bring you other areas of, of re recurring revenue. And that's all what we're all looking for as well. Um, maybe just to start up the discussion, uh, maybe you could tell a little bit about yourself and maybe how your view is, Justin, um, on how you define what Unified Communications is. Yeah, well, you did a great intro, so I'm not going to talk a lot about me, but I will talk a little bit about Unified Communications. Uh, so, I, you know, just kind of touch base on it. I've definitely been doing this for over 20 years, which means I've learned that I don't know everything there is to know about voice or networking, uh, which I was definitely afraid of before you and I had started chatting. So I think I really appreciate you guys having us on the call today to talk about it. So one of the things that I like, Unified Communications, what is it, right? Like, I, I hear it a lot. UCAS and, and I ask for lots of different definitions. So unified communication is the ability to unify all forms of communication, whether it's a phone call, a chat, an SMS, a web chat, uh, call center activity. We want to take everything and make it all one easy to use platform to be able to communicate. You know, the way we look at it today is you should be able to meet your customers where they want to communicate and not force them into what you're used to doing, right? I've, I've got a legacy in picking up a physical hand that I almost just did it. That's how uh, used to it I am. I've, I've got a physical handset on my desk, but it's not something that I use all the time, right? And there's lots of companies that don't really need to have a handset, don't need to have a physical phone because that's really not how they communicate. You know, I look at my wife who's seven years younger than me and, and all she does is text, right? Her family, that's how I get communicated with is a text message. So how do we unify all that? And that's really what unified communications is, is taking all that and put it in one single pane of glass. You know, from my perspective, you've got UCAS, Unified Communications as a Service. Zoltis does that, but we also just have uni unified communications where people aren't going to pay for a recurring. Now, obviously, the majority of the world is moving and transitioning to the recurring model. We just want to yeah. talk about how you can unify communications just in general. And you, you did mention something, you know, like a handset physically, too. That's kind of that local that local network, you still have that local piece, um, but then talk about how, you know, things are moving to cloud and how that affects, you know, kind of the whole service as well, or maybe even the business model on how transitioning people from maybe typical POTS lines, et cetera, to, to now like a cloud PBX. And what's that transition looking like today? Yeah, for, for Zoltus, it's a real easy transition, right? So if they have a legacy on-premise system going into the cloud, there's really no difference in our product. So what we look at today is what, what, what the big um, thing that we have to watch for is the underlying network, right? So the cloud just means that it's in somebody else's hardware. So we have multiple data centers across the country that we put our hardware into, but there still has to be a delivery point from that local connectivity. If I'm not using the physical device, I'm using my laptop and I'm using the soft phone built into it, I'm using my mobile device and I might be connecting over Wi-Fi for something else, what does my network look like? And one of the things that we see that people that don't provide both the, the network and the voice is we see lots of issues, right? At the end of the day, what you get is somebody that was sharing a customer that doesn't want to share a customer, right? So yeah, if an yeah, MSP yeah. or somebody does the network, doesn't want it, doesn't win the voice, right? They don't want to share that, that network, right? So it's harder to get people to fix the network issues, which can cause a lot of the problems, right? Today, the network and connectivity are the key point to making the cloud system work. So are we delivering a good network? And that's why Zoltus uses Zizel today is because we know it's a great network piece to be able to put in there to be able to connect back to our data centers. Yeah, definitely that local network, it's still that critical piece to deliver the quality, right? Because now people just associate the voice quality or the voice system itself. It's okay, it's in the cloud, so it must be your problem. You know, and, and they don't realize that within that, it's also important to make sure that the networks inside are secured, they're mm -hmm. properly prioritized, they're managed, you know, in a way that you can visibly see, uh, and maybe some of the partners can then, you know, see what's going on with the network, help to control, help to troubleshoot it. I think it's also mm -hmm. important because I think voice quality is so easily, uh, you know, noticeable that it's something's bad, right? You can hear it when their quality is bad, you have like drop calls or there's stutters in the, you know, mm -hmm. stuttering in the voice. I find it interesting that people can accept uh, cellular quality, but on a, a on a landline, when you pick up a phone, a physical one, they expect that the voice is uninterrupted. You know, it's like a wired connection, right? But even though now things are moved in the cloud, uh, you know, people are just acceptant of cellular being a wireless kind of connectivity and, and accept those drop calls. But yet in this kind of space, uh, people are more uh, affected by it. Well, 100%. I try, you nailed that one on the head, right? Like, 
this is easy. If, if our call is bad on a cell phone, I just hang up and I call you right back. No big deal. And I don't even think about it. It's not even a hesitation. Oh, it's probably mine. I'll just hang up and call right back. With that voice system, you're going to get that phone call. And oh my gosh, it's horrible. This is the worst thing I've heard. And it's just because of one drop call, right? Even if I'm using my cell phone and I'm connected to the Wi-Fi network, and, and that happens a lot with the mobility apps, they, they still expect that same landline quality of a phone call that you used to have, even though the network might not be in place to support it. That's why it's important to provide both at the same time from our perspective. Yeah, and I find it interesting too, you said about your wife and just the communication way that that she uses it, just mostly text. And rather than, you know, some of uh, maybe the old school people or just when they want to make a phone call, they want to actually have direct interaction and contact. But I, I could see how, you know, your services probably had to adapt and, and evolve over time, right, in order to, to facilitate all these ways of communication. Uh, how do you seeing that adoption? Is it is it kind of like age-based? Is it, do you find kind of the older people who are ground into the, you know, the old way of doing things, they're more like or less likely to transition to like a cloud tech product. They're still trying to install POTS lines. And where is that going? Like, you know, if, if nobody wants to use POTS lines, POTS lines, what's, you know, what do you foresee in that? Yeah. Well, I see POTS lines. We'll start with that one because it's an easy one. That was a big softball and I appreciate that one, Try. Uh, POTS <laughs> just, lines just are going away. Yep. Yeah, that's, I'm going to try and hit this one real far. So POTS lines are essentially going away. Right. Like the FCC is sunsetting POTS lines. It's really hard to maintain that network. There's copper in the ground. It's, it doesn't make sense for anybody to utilize. So POTS lines are going away. I have seen people getting charged upwards of $120 a POTS line. So it just doesn't make sense to keep a POTS line anymore. I had somebody the other day that showed me a bill. They were getting charged $1,000 a month for 10 POTS lines. So pretty interesting. So I think that's just kind of going away in general. That's what we're going to see if POTS lines get sunset. It'll all be sip trunks at the end of the day. Um, so I, I think the next piece is the the how do people take on technology? And I don't necessarily always think it's age-based. I think it's really what your technology acceptance is. You know, you have definitely the stronghold where people want to have a handset on the phone. You know, we still sell a, a big chunk of systems with handsets, but we also have implementations where there's no handsets, where they're all using a soft phone. We have implementations where people are only using their mobile application. So it's really what your technology acceptance is. And I hate to put people in buckets, right? I can tell you that my dad didn't use it, but you know, I use both of them and I kind of waffle back and forth. I'm in technology, right? I want to communicate where my customers and partners want to be at. So for me, I utilize the technology that's going to put me in front of my customers the best way possible. And I think that's what you're going to see a lot of is people transitioning away from just what they're comfortable with and having to meet their customers, right? Like if they want a text message, you've got to be able to support that. They want to go to your yeah. website and chat, you got to be able to do it. You know, I, right. I can't tell you a website you go to today that doesn't have web chat, which is just queuing into their call center. Got it. And I, Brian had a question here that's interesting. What options are there to replace POTS lines for things like alarm systems and other building automation that's expected, you know, that's expecting an analog sig signal with all these kinds yeah. of communication changes? So what we're seeing in most cases is they're going to like, like hotspots. So they'll end up going to a Verizon hotspot that's providing SIP over it. So you're seeing a lot of alarm companies switch over to that because the POTS lines are going to go away. Interesting. Uh, well, I guess, you know, in terms of verticals, you know, with all these kinds of different applications that are out there that use some level of unified communications, what kind of verticals do you see? I know we we're in you know senior living facilities, and networks that are being built in hospitals, medical. You know, again, these communication pieces not only for the uh, the, the employees themselves, but then the tenants and stuff. I think you know, especially senior living. Before it was like, well, we just give them a you know POTS line, phone line, and they could just call their you know whoever. But now all of a sudden, we're seeing you're know, having to put out. Uh, you know, IP voice, you're having to deliver video, you you know, internet, the guest network access, like all of that's coming into play. So, you know, how do you see that? Yeah, well, I mean, from a vertical market perspective, we love the long-term healthcare and the senior living facilities. Those, those, those are great results. The medical is, is actually our number one vertical market, not something that we went after, just something that we started doing research on our sick codes and where we were installing our systems and found out that medical was the number one. So what we did is went out and become, became uh, HIPAA compliant, right? So we wanted to make sure to put a big emphasis on that 
and make sure that yeah. we could deploy a HIPAA compliant system, right? We wanted to help our partners raise the bar on the competition because if you're in the senior living, the hospital, the medical facilities, you should be 100% HIPAA compliant, right? You should be able to execute a BAA and really get your customer to realize that if the other companies that are in there proposing it aren't HIPAA compliant, that it's not somebody they should do business with. Even if somebody was coming in to do something as simple as run a cable, they should be HIPAA compliant if they're going to walk into that office and be able to execute a BAA. We just think it's super important because of all that healthcare, the patient information you were chatting a little earlier about that, that patient yeah. information they can, can get corrupted or, or pulled out. That's super important. So we have to be protective of it. You know, we look at all these vertical markets and we just had our annual sales meeting uh, like three weeks ago. And, and we really drove into the vertical markets and where we do really well. And those, those obviously are there. We see a lot in school districts to get today, K through 12, higher ed, Right, there's lots of applications and all that needs to have a really good network that supports it. So, um, but but we do a lot in that the vertical market arena. Yeah, I'm interested in maybe some of the, the people who are, are watching and listening today, like how many of you have walked into a network and and maybe you were, you know, it's a medical field even or something that's not compliant and, and you just looked at their network and, and said, oh my goodness, like how are they doing this and not getting in trouble for it? And because their network is either you know, they have an off the shelf firewall or, you know, their network is all flat and not, not segregated and stuff like that. I just talked to a, I just was on a trip in uh, Phoenix last week and we, we talked to some partners and that's, that's their nightmare. They walked in and, you know, a lot of times the, the customer doesn't want to make that change or they don't even realize that they made a change because their, their brother, their cousin, whoever just came in and just did this install for them. And it was convenient. It was just cost effective. And I think there's a lot of that too, where I think some of our data partners are going into these networks and even for voice kind of applications, uh, or maybe they're trying to overhaul something that they used for voice before and, uh, you know, being asked to add guest networks, being asked to uh, do the voice video and data, but their existing equipment doesn't facilitate that very well. Or they might have like some old switch in there and they go, oh, it's POE, it should be fine, right? But in today's day and age with, you know, convergence of or increases of, of video technology or video conferencing as well, that might not facilitate that. So I think it's there's a need and desire to always go through, upgrade the technology, or at least evaluate the technology, and then create a more maybe robust Wi-Fi network and things like that to make sure the application works well, right? I think that's a big, big thing there. And I think that's kind of leads to where we want partners to know that you want to control, and you kind of touched on this too, controlling that entire solution. Um, what do you see, like, you know, why do you see benefits in that, in, in controlling that? You kind of touched a little bit on that earlier, but, you know, let's look at that a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the the real goal should be for everybody to own every IP address on the network that they're taking care of, right? So if you're going into a customer, you should own every IP address. The, the reality today is what we're seeing Customers want that one hand to shake, one throat to choke mentality, right? They want one service provider that they can call and get any ticket they have taken care of, right? We look at the voice thing. If voice is having a problem and I don't manage the network on, that it sits on, you know, it's very difficult for me to get things changed. No, my network is good. I designed it. I know that it's done right. Well, the reality is I can look at it and say, well, I've got drop calls. And to your point, it probably just wasn't prioritized, right? You know, inside my house, we had to get it set up correctly because my wife and I both work out of the house. We both do Zoom calls all day, right? Some of us uh, stream our music. Some Somebody streams Netflix during the day. That's definitely not me. I don't have time to do it. I'm not saying it happens upstairs in her office, but it might, uh, right? <laughs> so we had to make sure that everything was in place. To, to ensure that our phone calls went good, our video calls for work went good, but not sacrifice anything else in the in the house, right? So, and I think that's what companies have to look at is they need somebody that's able to go in and say, okay, here's a problem. You know, you've got this rogue person that's downloading and streaming everything going on, right? We're streaming video, we're streaming sound, I'm doing all this and I'm taking all the bandwidth and the voices and getting it. So it's really important to manage all that, that all the IP addresses on the network. And to take it a step further, one of the things that you'll end up seeing is less competition, right? If I own all the IP addresses, one of the things I do is I close the doors to my competition. Hey, I have already right. got a network provider. I've got a voice provider. So it just really allows you to close all those doors for your competition to come in. If you leave doors open, 
You're going to let somebody in that does everything. And the next thing they're going to do is start taking piece by piece and coming to try and take part of your customer away. So that's where yeah. we see the most important thing is to hold, own that whole entire customer so you don't lose the customer at the end of the day. Yeah, that makes sense. And just so you know, too, this is being recorded. So any secrets that you reveal, HR may come back and get you on this, Justin. So just be careful with that. Yeah, careful. we also see that too. <laughs> it's it's definitely that blame game because that's that's you know we've all gone through kind of the troubleshooting process when you call any kind of service provider, and it's it's like you know the Spider Man meme, and it's like no, it's everyone's pointing fingers at somebody else, right? It's you, it's you, and it's not right. me because like you said, oh, I did my job and it should work perfectly fine, but without visibility into the network. And I think that's one of the, you know, big things that with, that with Zysel and how we, we promote our cloud platforms is that it gives visibility to people who are doing voice or any kind of application so that when there is some sort of issue, you do have that, that backdoor, that way to get in to troubleshoot um, things like you said, maybe affecting the communications. Maybe it's something that, you know, you don't realize an employee is doing, or like you said, downloading something, illegal music or videos or things that they shouldn't be doing, or even people who are maybe just a client that happened to come to the, the office, be connected to your Wi-Fi, but their laptop is virus infected and it just saturates the network, eats up all the sessions, and then causes that choppiness or causes that because there's no you know uh, uh, prioritization, bandwidth control, or segregations of the network. So all of that is all competing with each other. Um, and you know, with voice, I think people expect that reliability, um, mm -hmm. that it's always there, it's available, and the quality is always there. Um, and you know, how do you think, I guess, is there, do partners need to change any of their business models to kind of adapt uh, these kinds of solutions? Like, uh, you know, do you see people moving more so towards just kind of break fix or is it really scaled towards like a recurring revenue kind of scenario? Yeah, I think everybody's really moving. The majority of our partners are moving to the recurring revenue model stream, right? At the end of the day, it's the right thing to do for your customers and for your organization. It's where the big value is at in your organization. So yeah, do I see people moving into or need to move into that? Absolutely. I think the break fix model just enables people to stay outside of that recurring revenue stream. Uh, and it always it doesn't always do them the biggest favor at the end of the day, right? If I know I've got a recurring contract with somebody, I know I'm gonna get great service with them. And in the break fix model, in a lot of cases, what they end up with is, well, hey, I'm busy. I've got all these other priority customers and you're a break fix. It's just not gonna be my priority. So the majority yeah. of partners that we have today are in that recurring revenue stream. I, we do see that too. And I think that's where our products kind of align as well. It gives you an opportunity to provide networking piece as that recurring revenue, and you can build it in with this entire communication. So you can have this package or multiple you know, levels of packages that, that give you this communication. So you do unify the, the data, voice, you know, video kind of application into one network piece, one bill you know, to the customer. And whatever happens in the end, I think most people don't, don't really necessarily care what, what kind of phone am I using or what underlying you know, network is there necessarily as long as the service itself is working you know yep. uh, why why what do you see like why is voice so important i think like what are the benefits that are that are there and you know sometimes people see voice as a commodity um but how so how do you kind of make that you know take your way in or get your way into maybe a new customer or switching somebody over from a from an existing voice contract that's a great question. So um, one of the things that we like to teach our partners, if, you're, if your core business is managed services, we want to help you sell more of your core products, right? At the end of the day, people tend to view voice as a utility, right? If they're moving offices, they know they need to get a network set up. They know they need to get Wi-Fi in the building. They know they need to do a couple of things. And, and it tends to be voice and power are like one of those last lining utilities that they bring in. Now, do I believe that Zoltus is a commodity product? The answer is absolutely not, because we're going to sell you a solution, but that's the way people view it today. One of the things that we look at is voice is a really easy way to open a door, right? Because people view it as a commodity and a utility, essentially, at the end of the day, when, when people are walking in, it's really easy to say, hey, try, can I get a copy of your phone bill? I think I could save you 30 to 40% if you just give me a copy of your phone bill. Well, heck yeah, I'll give you a copy of my phone bill. Now that conversation, if I'm knocking on the door and I come in and say, hey, I'd like to run a network analyzation tool on here. I'm going to run it for two days. Is that okay? 
Well, I, I guarantee that answer is no, if I'm just walking in the door, but on a phone person, it's a really good chance that you can walk out with a phone bill because yeah, if you can help me lower that cost, that's really important. One of the things that we think it does is it allows you to build a trusting relationship with somebody. I can look at this, I can lower the bill. Hey, by the way, now that we're doing business together, I, we also supply networks and it's a really good thing as we're going through the process to look at what your network looks like. Now it's in a better relationship standpoint versus starting with something else. So we see a lot of people in, in the network equipment managed services world using voice as that entry point into, a, into an office. Heck, I've got a person that used uh, water and coffee as an entry point, right? You just need <laughs> something that gets you in the door that makes it easy to start that relationship. Yeah, can I upgrade it to beer and wine or like? I'm yeah. Not... <laughs> well, I think you can't buy house, try. You should come sell. <laughs> well, I, I also want, you know, the, the cool thing I think that working with Zulti is, is, has been with us is that we've been able to also uh, work together and, you know, through our uh, distributor partner, uh, Target, you know, really brought us together because they were realizing that, hey, when we would sell a voice system from Zulti's, we were just selling them also a Zycel, you know, switch to, to complement it, to power it up, et cetera. And so we decided, hey, let's, let's work together, make sure that whatever the configurations that they're using, uh, we could test it, verify it, make sure that our hardware works nicely together uh, because we know the end users are probably doing that, but we wanna make sure that our, our partners who maybe have never used a Zulti's product or maybe vice versa, never used a Zycel product, have kind of a quick way to, to kind of get on board, uh, you know, shorten that learning curve there for configurations, uh, typical use scenarios. Um, that's something that we're also gonna be coming up with as well to help voice and networking uh, people to get a, a quick grasp on how to make sure that they're doing best practices to ensure that their quality of their network is, you know, uh, able to, to provide these kinds of services and such. So, mm -hmm. you know, how have you seen that process? You know, how have your customers and your partners, you know, um, once hearing about that, how have they responded? Yeah, I think, well, you, you kind of hit that. I'm going to say this a couple of times today. It sounds like you hit the nail on the head, right? We, we came together <laughs> because of Target. And it is because we were selling together a lot of partners that were just exclusively going with Zoltus and Zizel. I think they were going with the ZZ Top model. I don't know if they saw the ZZ <laughs> or not, uh, but but I think it's 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 formed a great relationship between us. I think the interoperability and white paper that we're creating will make it very easy for people to implement it with the best practices. Right, that's really important. I think you know one of the most important things that partners need is is support. Right. Does do the providers give me the support that I'm looking for? Does my distributor support me in the entire application that I'm going out and selling? And so I think that's just a super important thing. And it's and it's it just there's more value that needs to be put on that than just going out and finding a cheap product, right? At the end of the day, do I know that it's gonna work because I want to go sell more? Right. If 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 anything falls down in this process it makes it hard for us to go out and sell more product, whether it's a network piece or I think I can pick up all the Wi-Fi stuff now next or cybersecurity, how do I get all that? It all has to work. And that's what makes me the most excited is today yeah. our partners will be able to benefit from that, the Zizone Volts partners, because it's done. We've done the work for them. Now here's an easy way to go implement it. You get to make money and you get to sell more products. And I, I think like working together, uh, and combining it with our Nebula Cloud, we can literally come up with your, you know, the partners can come up with a, and help them with a, a solution configuration where you have a switch gateway access point that's configured in the cloud. That's your template that you know has been tweaked and, and confirmed or works well with the Zulti solution. Your voice video data is all, you know, working in harmony there. And now you have a template that when you then sell to a customer of that type, you literally could copy paste and cut, you know, cookie cutter them to another site. And now deploying it makes it you know, a lot easier. You don't have to go back through and reconfigure and rehash all those things. Again, you literally can start with this template base, make some minor changes if you need to for IP addresses or things like that and deploy it. And, you know, from a install perspective, it's not so scary anymore because you just need a, a person who's not a, you know, a certified technician, network technician, but you just need somebody who knows how to plug in this port into that internet connection, plug the switch into that port, plug the AP into this port, plug in the voice phones into the POE switches as, as labeled. Boom, they should all light up, get power, call home, and now all of a sudden everything should be should be working, you know, in harmony there. 
And, and you did mention ZC Top. Maybe that's our, our walk up music next time we do a webinar too together. Uh, and then people will wonder why you call ZZ, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then we'd have to pay royalties. <laughs> uh, also, we're, you know, ZZ, we're at the end of the alphabet, but I think partners should consider us first in their books, right? So, yeah, um, well, anything else you want to add, Brian? Um, that was a great discussion. And also, uh, anybody who's watching and listening now, if you have any questions, again, please use the Q&A section. We'll try to answer uh, as many of those as we can. Um, but this is your time. If you want to ask myself or uh, Justin any questions, please feel free as Justin leaves us with some final comments. So you want me to talk now? Okay, I can do that. Oh, now. yeah, yeah, you can just talk yeah, as a way for questions. A way for questions. No, I really appreciate everybody's time today so far. Uh, I, I try, I always appreciate our conversations. I think there's a lot that we're going to be able to do together in the future. So I'm really looking forward to continuing our partnership. I'm looking yeah. forward to going and meeting some of the partners as we continue to get out on the road. Um, yeah, but I, I'm really looking forward to deploying more and more Zizel and Volvis together. Yeah, sounds great. Now, just so everybody knows, too, our marketing team will run a raffle based on the record data that we have from this webinar. And we'll announce that and we'll reach out to the winner as well. So um, doesn't look like we have any other questions at the moment. If you guys want to ask any questions, if you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to reach out to me. My email is try, T-R-I, at zycel.com. I've been here so long that I have a three-letter uh, email address. So nobody else, everybody else has their dot last names in it too. So look, hopefully I keep that forever. But I'd like to thank Justin and Zoltis for joining uh, joining me here on this week for Tech Talk. I hope this discussion was helpful to you in considering adding some sort of, you know, the entire complete uh, unified communications to your offerings. And so if you have any questions, again, reach out to me or your channel's account uh, managers. We can get you in touch with, um, with Justin's team over there uh, and where to kind of look up some of these products that they need, that, that you might be interested in, in what they have to offer. Uh, Sheldon, did, did have a last second question. Are you certified with any UC platform? Is that for me or you? Are we certified with any unified communications platform? So yeah. between you and I, uh, Try, we are doing the white paper. Uh, so yeah. we have interoperability with Zoltus and uh, Zizel, but I don't know if you're certified with any other UC platform. Now, currently we're not, we don't have any kind of official certification process with that. All of our products are very standard um, in terms of networking equipment, but we do have partnerships and interoperability like with your yourself to come up with uh, white papers and configuration best practices, et cetera, to make sure that everything works well uh, and configured and tested on both sides for engineering from engineering. So from a networking standpoint, we're pretty agnostic. If you do, Sheldon, have you know, a certain other platform as well that, that you're looking for, just, just you can send us a message. Um, but, you know, typically we're agnostic to it, um, but we do have a exclusive partnership here with Zoltis where we do provide uh, those configurations and uh, help to make sure that both sides work well. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for your question. Well, I guess if that's, if there's nothing else, um, I appreciate the time that you've given us over the last 30, 30 minutes or so. Uh, we'd love to uh, see you at maybe a future event that um, that we'll be having. Um, and so keep your keep your ears peeled for that. Uh, we'd love to you know have a chance to visit with you and uh, interact with you in person. We go to a lot of different uh, trade shows and events as well. So if you if you see us uh, at a, a particular MSP Roadshow or, you know, of that liking, uh, feel free to, to attend and drop on by and, and say hello. We'd love to talk to you more about the solutions. And if, again, if you have any questions, reach out to us or your sales account manager, uh, and we'd love to direct you in the right, uh, in the right direction. So Justin, thank you so much again. It was fun again to, to do this and look forward to, to another time sometime in the future. Thanks, Troy. Me too. Enjoy your nice weather. I'm going to go enjoy the rain. All right. Go, go, go sit and cry in the rain. Have a cup Thanks, of coffee. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. All right. Take care.